Well, hello there, chums. Tis I, Captain of Steve, and I've got myself a cup of tea. Now, I've also got a nightingale background on behind me, so I'm going to be talking about nightingale today. I know, you wouldn't have been out of guess it, would you? Uh, anyways, let's jump on over onto the old Tinter web, shall we, people? So here we go. Okay, and here we are. Now, IGN have done three videos for nightingales, and they've done them quite close together now what i would say is this video here the giant boss fight goes on for some time as you can see i've only watched like a quarter of it but this video here gives the synopsis of that fight and what actually took place in it and it also ta talks about this video which is the 20 minutes of gameplay so out of all three of these i think the only one i really need to play you is this middle one so let's hit this up and let's take a listen people shall we Okay, let's hit play. I learned so many intriguing things about Nightingale during my visit to Inflection Games that it'd be impossible to unpack everything in one short video. So I won't, but I will hopefully shed some light on the setting and gameplay loop. Nightingale isn't necessarily the game you'd expect from seasoned ex-Bioware devs, but the years of experience behind its ideation is evident in what I saw in more than six hours of gameplay, a stylish take on a shared world survival crafting RPG. I love the skybox. Wow! The world of Nightingale is similar to our own in the 1800s. However, in this alternate reality, the Fae appeared in the 1500s to share their knowledge of magic with humans, altering the path of history and spurring the birth of the magical city of Nightingale. Nightingale begins with a short prologue introducing the world and setting the stage for the opening moments. A mysterious phenomenon known as the Pale has foggily swept over the entirety of Earth, putting everything it touches into a state of suspended animation. The only human city left is Nightingale, but the magical portals to get there have malfunctioned, cutting off access. Actually, the entire system of portals and Fey Realms have been thrown into chaos, tossing the human realm walkers, including you, around with it. The story and setting loosely glue your overarching objectives together and serve as a curious jumping off point into the world and gameplay. Alongside you on your journey back to Nightingale is Puck, who explains much of the way of the world as you progress. But beware. In short time, darkness will descend. Instead of assigning small tasks one after the other over and over again to serve the story, Nightingale allows the player freedom and space to grow curious enough to come up with their own goals. It's a not so uncommon trait among survival crafting games, and it's just one reason why Nightingale is so appealing to me. In the beginning, players need more short-term, explicit goals to help them get going as a sort of tutorial. As you follow Puck from realm to realm after fleeing the Pale, he instructs you to do very basic survival crafting trope tasks. And yes, even though there is magic, the developers wanted to keep it more grounded. You can't just conjure stuff like a campfire out of thin air. Magic exists for humans in a system of enchantments. Collect materials and craft to be able to perform magic, but only while wielding the weapon with the enchantment. Fairly early on, Nightingale opens up and offers inspiration to conjure your own goals. After putting down your first Karn to stake out a home base, you'll find a Site of Power. These mini dungeons of sorts are only unlocked if you meet the power requirements, which you can achieve by a variety of means. After unlocking and completing the Site of Power, we earned a new major realm card recipe. Realm cards, basically, are used in combination to open portals to new realms. There are three types of cards. Biome, Major, and Minor. A Biome Realm card and a Major Realm card are necessary, while the Minor Realm card is optional. The Biome dictates the environment, the Major card loosely dictates the difficulty of that realm, and the Minor Realm card will affect minor things, like weather or creature behavior. The Minor cards can be deactivated and switched out at will, too. The realm that's created once you apply the cards to the portal is completely procedurally generated, but stagnant once created and uniquely yours. No one else will have the same layout for their abeyance forest realm, for example. This is your main goal and basic progression. Unlock card recipes to unlock more difficult realms, with the goal of getting stronger and eventually reaching Nightingale. The namesake city isn't available just yet in early access, but there is the multiplayer hub The Watch, Apex Creature Hunts, and the Difficult Vaults, intended to be completed in multiplayer. But there are plenty of other incentives and goals too. 
You can also earn crafting recipes for new building pieces, so you can make the dwelling of your dreams. Unlocking new realms helps you toward that goal too, as each realm combination has shops with different crafting recipes. In most survival crafting games, I generally leave the building and town organization to others, and I see my aim being similar in Nightingale. The Apex creature hunts and vaults inspired loosely by Destiny 2 strikes promise to be challenging with worthwhile rewards. Though I didn't get to play these myself, I did get to be in the room while a group of players coordinated together to conquer them. First, the Apex creature Hambaba. I loved hearing lead designer Bjorn Taylor telling his teammates to remember to eat for buffs before engaging. But despite their best efforts to prepare, the hunt still turned into a bit of chaos to my delight. One person accidentally aggroed the Hambaba by shooting it, to which someone else responded with, you have to press a button to shoot, how did you do that? I couldn't really help but laugh along with the team. It looked like a fun time with your friends. Watching them play through the vault was equally entertaining. The team didn't solve one of the puzzles very quickly, causing Inflection CEO Aaron Flynn to hang his head in his hands and lament. To their credit, the vaults are procedurally generated, so the layout is never the same. Eventually, they succeeded, moved on, and tackled the apex creature at the end of the dungeon. All in all, the gameplay loops of Nightingale look flexible, engrossing, and fun, though I am mildly worried about how much attention the base building can keep of my crafty friends. I'm unsure of what else there is to do or maintain once it's built the way you like, but I also perhaps don't fully appreciate the amount of time and effort it will take to unlock the recipes needed to create your dream home. Of course, I do suppose creatures can also come wreck things and force you to build anew, too. Ah, the joys of survival. Dangoscani! Nightingale is being released in early access on February 22nd. For more on Nightingale and everything else, keep it here at IGN. Okay, Jum, so we've got the 20 minutes of footage playing in the background. Now, there's a couple of things as takeaways from what she was saying there. Now, I was doing beta testing, and... I would say that a lot of what she said there is very much on point to what I actually experienced in the beta, but from this 20 minutes of footage in the background that's playing right now, I can tell you that it's moved on leaps and bounds from when I was doing the beta testing. It looks freaking sublime. I mean, it always did to a certain degree, but it looks like they're using the latest version of the Unreal Engine now. And they, they were using Unreal Engine 5 in the beta, but this looks like it's gone up a notch somewhat from what I experienced. And it's beautifully sort of being realized now now something i also noticed is the wolves when they went to attack during her footage they actually leapt up so you could hit them quite easily before a lot of the time they would stay at sort of waist height and attack you which it was very difficult to get a strike on or to make it feel like you had actually made a connection to them what I saw from the footage there, this combat has been enhanced somewhat. Now, I didn't get as far in as making a bench where I could actually put magics or enchantments on my weapons. To be honest, I spent most of my time gallivanting around, looking at sort of the actual atmosphere and just building little campsites freaking everywhere I went. Yeah, I was just going out and exploring. I didn't invest too much time in building a homestead, but I can tell you that when I did on my very first playthrough, and this is right back, right, right, right back into the beta testing phase, I built a small little platform, put up a couple of walls, and that took me quite a long time in the grind of cutting down trees and doing stuff to actually build that little um, shed if you can call it that, I didn't even get a roof on it, because it was seriously taking me a long time to get all the resources I need. You see like how she's grabbing stuff in this footage behind us? You couldn't just do that before, you had to hold the button down and pick it up. They've made it a seriously lot quicker in resource gathering, and also when you were hacking down trees before, it took a lot more swipes to hack down a tree. It They've sped everything up when it comes to resource gathering, and a lot of the feedback I think they didn't just get from me, but also from all the other individuals inside of beta, was resource gathering could do with a little bit more of a rebalance and it looks like they've done exactly that and some of these actual buildings that we can see that they've built inside of some of the footage that we saw looks like there's all different styles implemented now like japanese type style buildings and all sorts of stuff it looks freaking awesome so i managed to unlock wood but i did see stone structures being built on the discord we were sharing pictures and images from our plays and i saw people have built some pretty darn awesome stuffs out of stone 
I didn't get that far inside of my crafting. But the way that you unlock new recipes is by unlocking new benches and then you put things by the benches. So if you do want to enhance your a magical ability reservoir, you know, you put a bench down, then you put a crystal ball on it or something, and it might unlock you another ability or another sort of recipe, I should say, to craft something a bit more magical. But if you wanted to go the technology route, you might put something else on the desk that's more technology infused, which would give you a different recipe. So there's ways and means of doing that. So you might want a couple of crafting benches with a couple of different um, enchantments on them or attachments, I should say, which give you those in enhanced recipes. Now, as you see them spinning around in this um, 20 minutes of gameplay footage, you see all different structures in the background. You saw what looked like a giant skull. You saw a couple of buildings. There is always something of interest over the horizon that draws your interest. And you think, oh, I've got to go there. Oh, I need to look at that. It is kind of overwhelming, the actual worlds themselves. Now, traversal of the worlds is pretty seamless as well and quite smooth. I didn't actually get stuck on the environment in any sort of way, shape or means. Jumping and climbing and getting around to where you want to go is fairly smooth. What I would say, though, is the survival mechanics with the game. You've got a couple of meters and one of them is a hope meter. And that one is a little bit odd because, you know, you need to get well rested, not just only well fed, but you've got to be well rested. You've got to keep your sanity levels up to some degree in a roundabout way. Well, that's how it kind of feels. So there is a lot of survival elements to this. It isn't just an exploration game. When I saw this game, I thought that, you know, I'd be jumping through portals, spinning up random environments, putting down very quick, simple, easy bases. But as you can see here, the base building is far more complex and involved than what I initially expected from some of the trailers that I saw. In all the trailers that we saw, we saw them build bases, but it looked like it was you know, a communal thing and everybody was chipping in. It can be that, apart from I didn't fire up multiplayer. So I was building all my sort of stuff solo and a lot of the resources to require that. I can see here, they've actually reduced the actual resource count to what it was before. So it looks like the rebalancing has taken place and I think I can get more vested into building my own little homestead. Yeah, some of the feedback that I gave in early beta is that it felt a little bit like a second job at times and I just wanted to get out there and explore and I was also hoping to find chests inside of the world, you know, like, you know, and and find things inside of chests or abandoned camps where other travellers had died where I could just get their stuff. But there's not really too much of that. You do come across like um, old abandoned camps and stuff that's got food supplies in there and resources. But you're not going to find yourself an awesome sword or a gun or something like that. You have to build your way up to that. Now what I do like is the blueprint system, so you can actually lay out a blueprint of your base the way you want it to be and then come back in and pile the resources into those bits. So it, you don't have to try and remember everything, you just go out, get a shed load of resources, come back, plow them in and see how much of your base you can make and then towards the end, yes, then maybe commit a few things to memory of what you need to do in exact numbers. But yeah, I do like the blueprint system, I do like the building system. Originally, when you went into build camera mode, it came up with this weird machine with buttons on it and I couldn't work out to put the blanking thing away. It looks like they've done away with that altogether now and the building system looks like it's far more intuitive and it looks like that again they've listened to all the feedback that they got because there was a lot of people inside of the discord in the beta discord not the actual social discord that everybody can see. We had our own private discord and we shared photos, shared feedback and the developers were so on point Every every playtest that we did, they actually hosted like an after session where they actually went in, spoke to us as long as we were there. I mean, time zones allowing. I managed to attend too, I believe. And we, we spoke to the actual devs and we actually gave feedback. They actually done round tables. So how did you find this playtest? It was like it was so awesome giving the feedback to the actual devs and everything was Although there was criticism there, it was always constructive, positive criticism. And the devs were like, you know what, like, you've got a point. We, we, we might be able to do something with that. Thank you. It was it was so awesome. I actually felt like I was part of the, the evolution of what you're going to see on early release. And you can see there as you're gathering resources and you see the damage done to the trees and things. Uh, the boars, uh, the boars, I found one of the hardest enemies. But you see there where they're blocking. When you block, when they attack, you can knock them back as well, which which does help. But yeah, use your guard. Don't just 
keep swinging blindly because you're freaking going to lose your stamina fairly quickly and these things always attack in a herd so be careful of that one. Oh, and that's another thing I didn't know I needed a knife to skin them until quite late on so I just left the dead carcasses everywhere <laughs> yeah yeah if you skin them you're going to get their skins and the skins come in handy for all sorts of stuff later so yeah make sure you craft a knife quite early on people inside the viewers and that was another thing so the tutorial has evolved as well so i'd like to think a lot of those sort of things those nuances where i was jumping over to the discord saying how the heck do you get this sort of ore where do i find this uh, what the fudge is this all about hopefully a lot more of that is going to be inside the game tutorials now sadly i didn't manage to get into the server test which is one of the last tests that they've done and i don't think they're going to have another beta test before it goes into early access in february we're getting very close to that time now people so i am thoroughly interested in jumping in and seeing this i mean a lot of this that you're seeing behind me right now these ui tweaks this all looks freaking fantastic. I mean, it did anyway when I last played it, but this looks like it's gone up a level. The text is a lot bigger than what I, I, I saw. It just feels a lot more cleaner. And I like the fact that they've used different colored fonts as well to break things up, to make it easier on the eye. This looks like it's a fully fledged game, but I know on launch, it's not going to be like a fully fledged game. It's going into early access first of all. So it's gone through alpha, I mean, a beta and alpha, and, and now it's going into early access. It's not going into this is a fully out there game as yet. So when it gets launched in February, it's still under evolution, but it's at the point where it's playable and doable. But they're still looking for those you know, bug reports, feedback, all that sort of stuff before it comes a, a box shelved game, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, I am thoroughly looking forward to this one. Um, for multiple reasons. I love the fact of the portal system. I think that's a, real, that's a real new sort of idea. And the fact that you spin up a procedurally generated instance on the opposite side. The fact that every time you do a raid or whatever on a dungeon, it's going to be procedurally generated, that dungeon. It's never the same layout. And the fact that the raids are going to be a bit more like Destiny and you're going to be getting loot and things in there that's worthwhile in doing and you're going to come across a boss fight in there. It ticks so many boxes for me, people, this game. The only thing that I feel that I still need to understand with this is can I play it live? Because a lot of it, or as what you can see here in the 20 minutes gameplay, is walking around a tree smashing the heck out of it. How long are people inside of my live stream going to want to watch me cutting down trees, as awesome as it does look? I mean, yes, it's great for the first maybe three to four trees, but after you've done like ten of them, how much of the audience is still going to be there? So live, I think the only things that I'm going to do live is raids and things of interest. Or after I've gathered a shed load of resources, maybe then do a build video. But yeah, it, it's going to be an odd one to actually bring entertaining content to the channel. I mean, I can do pre-recorded bits, put all my best bits together and all the action-packed bits, all the funny bits, all that sort of stuff, and make a video. Not a problem. It's just the live content, how I go about delivering that. And I think the best ones to do live is, like I say, raids and things like that, boss fights, challenges, that sort of stuff. Unless I've got, a, like I say, a bucket load of resources and do a build. But anyway, people, I hope you're looking forward to this one. I know I am. It's firmly set in my radar. It's got my eye peepers interested. And yes, you know, I've already had that little mini insight into this. So yeah, it's definitely something I'm going to be picking up day one. And I hope you do too. And yeah, check out these uh, videos that are on side IGN. I'm going to go and watch the rest of that boss fight that takes like 20 odd minutes or whatever. Um, but inside of that little mini video that I played you, she mentions that it doesn't go too swimmingly. <laughs> It's one of those Leroy Jenkins type moments, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to go watch it to see if it makes me chuckle. But anyway, people, I put this on your actual radar. It's only being released on PC at launch um, because it's going into early access. After it's gone through all early access, the rumblings that I heard from the devs is I would love to bring it to other platforms. It's just will this get the attention it needs will it actually pick up enough to make them want to bring it to the other consoles is it going to go fully fledged as a game let's see let's see what the community thinks on this one but because it's steampunk orientated because it's got all those procedural elements because it's got giant megafauna in it and it's got raids and it's got awesome multiplayer and it's also got base crafting and survival there's got to be something amongst those that ticks one of your boxes, if not one or two of them, you know? So for me, this ticks a lot of them. And 
yeah, I, I hope it gets enough sort of traction and mobility and, and all that sort of good stuff to bring it to all the other consoles because I think this needs a wide berth and it'd be lovely if they could bring in crossplay or something like that at a later date and get it so everybody can work together, be them on Xbox, be them on PC or PlayStation. If it comes to those platforms, you know, I can't put it out there as being gospel. It's just, I know that that's a want. I know that's a want. I don't know whether it's going to come to full fruition, people. But yeah. You can make it happen perhaps by jumping in, wishlisting this game on Steam, picking it up day one, jumping in and supporting Inflection Games with their new sort of IP. I mean, these are bi ex-Bioware guys. Yeah, Bioware done freaking awesome games. And this is an awesome game. I think this one has got the recipe to become a cult classic. I think this is going to... And because they listen to their community and they implement things... Make sure you get on their actual social Discord and, and share feedback, you know, because they do listen and they do change things up. I've seen it happen with my own eye peepers. Anyway, people, until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.